A platinum trophy is earned when all other trophies from the base game have been obtained. Trophies are rewarded for completing various tasks in game, and there are entire communities dedicated to hunting these trophies. Your typical trophy list will have you finishing the game on the hardest difficulty, find every collectible, and sometimes complete the game within a certain time frame. Some trophy lists, however, require the player to perform either very arduous or insanely time-consuming feats. Super Meat Boy, for example, has a trophy list that has you beat every world without dying to earn the Platinum. This being a game where you die pretty much constantly, some of these no-death runs will take weeks or even months of practice. Fortnite is another game with a Platinum that is very challenging to earn. This list has a trophy for building 500 or 1000 structures and successful missions, and a trophy for completing 1000 missions in co-op. Although technically not actually difficult, but rather insanely time consuming, this is another Platinum trophy that has eluded the vast majority of the player base. In both cases, only a few hundred people worldwide have been able to conquer these trophy lists. Despite the difficulty and rarity of these games, however, there exists a game with a trophy list that is in a complete league of its own. A game with a Platinum trophy that has only ever been earned by 7 people in a span of 4 years. A game that, despite being very short, will require upwards of a thousand hours of practice. That game is Crypt of the Necrodancer. So what makes this Platinum so absurdly difficult? Well, to start off, the game itself is already very hard and unforgiving. Crypt of the Necrodancer is a roguelike rhythm game that has you moving to the beat while fighting off enemies and progressing through the levels. The core mechanic of moving to the beat means the player is restricted on when they move and attack. Ignoring the beat is possible, but it's punished. Crypt of the Necrodancer has four zones for you to complete. Each zone has four floors with a mini-boss that needs to be killed in order to unlock the stairs for the first three floors, and a final boss on the fourth floor to unlock the exit stairs. These floors are randomly generated, meaning that every run is different and that you can't simply memorize item locations and plan your runs out. You're going to have to improvise a lot and gain a considerable amount of knowledge on the game's mechanics for later runs. If all four zones are completed, you will unlock all zones mode. Most of the trophies revolve around beating this mode with the various characters that are in this game. For the Platinum, you need to beat all zones mode with every single character. There are 9 characters. Cadence is the standard character. She has no bonuses and no penalties. She does, however, face two unique bosses at the end of Zone 4, instead of one regular boss. Dead Ringer is the first boss and is relatively easy if you know what you're doing. The second fight, on the other hand, is against the Necro Dancer, which can be very hectic. You take control of two characters simultaneously, the only moment in the game where this is done. If one of the characters dies, the game is over, which can make it challenging to not panic in this section. Cadence is generally regarded as a medium difficulty character. The second character is Bard, who is by far the easiest in the game. Bard doesn't move to the beat and neither do enemies, meaning you have complete control over how fast the game is played, and that you can plan out certain actions in tough situations for as long as you want. The third character, Eli, is also on the easier side. Eli doesn't have a weapon, but only uses bombs, which he has an infinite amount of. These bombs can be pushed towards enemies from pretty far away, so you can play it safe most of the time. You just have to watch out for enemies that move as fast or faster than you, like monkeys or harpies. The fourth character is Dorian. Dorian moves two tiles per beat instead of one, making it very awkward to navigate around the floors with him. To veteran players, however, he is the easiest character next to Bard, because he spawns with a health pool of four hearts, armor, and does an extra point of damage to enemies. If you just play it slow and let the enemies come to you, Dorian runs don't pose too much of a threat. The fifth character, Melody, spawns with a golden loot, the weapon used to kill the Necrodancer, and has to use this for the entire run. This weapon is quite different from other weapons, because it damages enemies by moving and playing next to them, as opposed to attacking them directly. The loot can damage multiple enemies at once though, creating for some really interesting gameplay. Melody faces a unique final boss at the end, commonly referred to as the Necrodancer 2, but this fight is fairly doable. Dove is probably the most unique character of all. She doesn't damage enemies at all, and has to reach the exit by avoiding enemies completely. Her only weapon is a flower that confuses enemies for small amounts of time. 
Dove doesn't have to defeat mini bosses or regular bosses, so Dove runs simply require you to repeatedly find the exit as soon as possible. Because of this, Dove is the most RNG dependent character out of them all. These six previously mentioned characters all change gameplay quite significantly, but are not necessarily a lot more difficult than the standard character. But the same cannot be said for the remaining three characters. Their penalties up the difficulty considerably, and they all have a very steep learning curve. The first of these is Monk. Monk has taken a vow of poverty, and as a result Monk will instantly die if any gold is picked up. Literally every enemy drops gold, and most other characters have to pick up as much gold as possible to require the necessary upgrades, so it's incredibly hard to not pick up any gold subconsciously, because doing so has been so ingrained into you up to this point. To add to this, you will face some enemies that can suck you into piles of gold if you're not being careful. Monk also has the worst spawn loadout of any character, with only two hearts of health and a blood shovel. The blood shovel drains your health when digging certain walls, which you need to do sometimes to avoid picking up gold. Also, the few enemies that don't drop gold usually will do so for Monk, because the character wasn't hard enough already, apparently. The next challenge character is Bolt. Bolt's penalty is simple. The speed of the beat is doubled. Meaning enemies move twice as fast and your time to react to situations is halved. It takes a long time to get used to the double tempo and it makes runs incredibly hectic. The death metal boss fight in particular is just absurd, because it has the fastest song in the entire game. The final character is Arya, who puts your mastery of the core mechanic to the test. If a single beat is missed, it's game over. Missing a beat doesn't just mean not moving or attacking in time. The beat is also missed if you're hit by an enemy or make a wrong move, like hitting a stone wall. So if you're hit once, it's game over with Arya. Arya also has to use the base dagger for the entire run. In addition to this, Arya will traverse through the four zones in reverse and face a unique boss, the Golden Loot, at the end. In other words, near perfection and complete mastery of the rhythm mechanic are required to finish an all zones run with Arya. Anything less will result in death. The worst part about this character is that aside from the trophy for completing a regular all zones run, you also need to finish a low percent run. A low percent run means you have to complete the run with the loadout you start with, acquiring armor, Spells, charms, or using shrines, things that can make runs a lot more doable, will all void this trophy. Although this definitely makes runs more challenging, it's not too different from regular Aria runs, because you're stuck with your base weapon and health pool anyway. So players that can finish a regular Aria are definitely skilled enough to complete a low percent run. If you've managed to conquer all these characters, you're already in the top tier of trophy hunters for this game, but there rests a final challenge to overcome. An all characters run for the Polyamorous Trophy. Beating every character consecutively is extremely tough, as it's already hard enough to complete a run with a single one of the harder characters. Plus, a run can take up to two hours. The game does show mercy for once, though, and lets you pick the order of the characters. So, naturally, you start with the hardest and most RNG dependent characters like Dove, Monk, and Arya, and then work your way down. Only around 30 of the 20,000 trophy hunters have been able to complete an all characters run, making it the third rarest trophy for the Platinum. So what more does this game have in store for us? It already has you beat the game with every character in a row. Is a more difficult task even conceivable? Yes. In fact, compared to what is required next, the Polyamorous Trophy is a peaceful walk in the park. The first of the two remaining trophies could theoretically be completed within 10 minutes, but will likely take upwards of 500 hours. There is a 10th character I left out earlier that isn't included in the all characters run, because doing so would honestly be inhumane. That character is Coda. Unlocked after the all characters run, Coda doesn't have any unique penalties, but instead combines three of the previously mentioned characters Monk, Bolt, and Arya. Meaning, you can't miss a single beat. The beat is doubled. Enemies move twice as fast. You can't pick up any gold. You're stuck with the base dagger, and you die from a single hit. 
to fully grasp the astronomical difficulty of this challenge. You really need to experience the double tempo for yourself, as just keeping up with the beats and navigating around the map is very challenging. And to actually progress of course, you also need to defeat a lot of enemies and search for loot. The actual trophy requires you to beat all zones mode with Coda, and because the developers weren't sure whether this was actually even possible, the trophy was named Impossible, right? This is also the point where using a regular PS4 controller isn't feasible anymore. So the select few that came this far use a Zim, or a keyboard and mouse set for consoles. Maintaining the double tempo without missing simply isn't doable on a PS4 controller. The strategy used by most players to complete Coda is acquiring the Ring of Phasing and spending most of the run phasing through walls. Enemies don't attack you when you're inside a wall, so this is as close as it gets to a safe strat. You still have to take out enemies though, so using the Ring of Phasing will only get you so far. Some particularly tough moments in this run are the spawns in the third zone levels, where you'll often spawn in and have to deal with 6 to 10 enemies immediately and be put in situations where you can do everything right and still die. The death metal boss fight. For Coda, this boss is 350 beats per minute, so you need to perform 5 to 6 actions a second all while defeating one of the toughest bosses in the entire game. And basically every moment in the last zone, because it has the most annoying enemies in the entire game, and the level of stress is at its max, given that this is the last zone. This trophy requires complete mastery of the game. Lightning fast reaction time, strategic thinking, nerves of steel, and most importantly of all, determination. At the time of making this video, only around 10 people have completed a Coda run. One of which actually with a PS4 controller. As impressive as this feat is, it still isn't the biggest roadblock for the Platinum. There is a trophy that is even more elusive. The lowest of the low trophy is the rarest in the game and requires you to complete an all characters run with your starting loadout. While this run never gets as intense and hectic as a Coda run, it takes 3 to 4 hours on average, and for the majority of this time, nearly perfect gameplay is required, and a single mistake will send you right back to the beginning. Dying a few hours into a run is of course extremely demoralizing, and yet another roadblock on this journey. There's a few characters in particular that are especially tough for low percent runs. Monk is the worst one of them all, because you can't acquire any items that increases the abysmal health pool for this. Dove is also pretty hard, because the success is up to chance for a large part. For Arya and Bolt, the difficulty spike compared to normal runs isn't as steep, since Arya can pick up many items to begin with, and Bolt actually has a decent starting weapon, the Spear. Then of course there's the remaining 5 characters, they are all a lot more challenging to complete runs with now. With the exception of Bard, you just can play it safe, and if you've reached this part of the run, you will play under increasing amounts of stress because of what's at stake. Both the Coda Trophy and the lowest of the low trophy take around 400 hours of playtime each. As I mentioned earlier, this game is very short, and both of these trophies could theoretically be obtained within a few hours, but in reality, they will take close to a thousand. This disparity in time you could theoretically get the trophies, and the time you will actually spend, is the most ludicrous I've encountered in all my years of trophy hunting. There is simply no other game that is even in the same league as Crypt in terms of difficulty. At the time of writing, only 7 people have obtained this Platinum, and the game has been out for over 4 years. Crypt is a game where even completing the main story with a standard character is too daunting for the average casual gamer, and at least challenging for a seasoned gamer. Not to mention a few miscellaneous trophies, like finding and killing 3 ultra rare green bats that I didn't even have the time to discuss in this video, that also have to be acquired. Towards the end of this Platinum journey, you'll be faced with some of the most difficult and strenuous challenges in all of gaming. It is, without exaggeration, the most difficult Platinum Trophy in PlayStation history. This should be the first video up on my channel. The next few videos I have planned will center around lore from some different gaming communities, but after that more videos about trophy hunting will follow, if that's your sole interest. Anyways, all forms of sharing this video and any type of feedback is greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching all the way through, and I hope you enjoyed.